Hello my friends, Chris here from Cuts and Colors and today I would like to do a walkthrough and review and unboxing of the Occult Taro with a nice gilded box in red on black very sturdy box the back all in black feels quite velvety and then the red gilding here with the moth on the front and some triangles and sigils and moon phases. Quite nice. We open it up. They have it, the inside of the box. With some sigils again. And then inside we find a guidebook. Also black and red, very velvety texture here again, nice. And then the book itself inside is all black, white and red, which is cool. But I had a quick look at the book and I will tell you something about this later because this as nice as it may feel in the hand and as nice as it may look, this is a total waste of paper. Sorry, sorry to say that. I don't mean to hurt anybody, but I will show you why. But okay, <laughs> it's okay. Then inside you get here a paper inlay in a way for the cards and then a ribbon, which is nice. Always nice to have a ribbon so you can get the cards out, but it's stuck. <laughs> it is stuck, but you can get the cards out. And <laughs> what you can see here, right here, this paper thingy is already broken, so the cards will slide underneath the border, which is not very nice, but it's okay. I think maybe you can just put this paper stuff here out and then use the sturdy box because the box itself is very nice and as mentioned before sturdy. So here are the cards with a red ribbon around them, a paper band. Now it's gone. <laughs> and cardstock wise, oh nice, nice, nice cardstock. Velvety again, matte finish, no sheen, very, very matte. And on the back of the cards we get a seal from the Key of Solomon, which is nice. So, um, okay, the cards are ordered in the order of the Goetia. Now what's this all about? Maybe before we dive into the cards, <laughs> before I zoom in and flip the camera, some words about this here, about the Occult Tarot. Well, um, the base concept of this deck is the 20, no, not the 20, the 72 demons or spirits of the Goetia or the Lesser Key of Solomon, which is a grimoire. And this grimoire, or magical text, book, whatever you'd like to call it, manuscript, um, from the Solomonic tradition, so the Western, Kabbalistic, Hermetic tradition, um, deals with 72 spirits, or demons, and how to summon these demons. And legend has it that King Solomon himself, um, he evoked these spirits and made them help him build the temple of Jerusalem. So that's the myth behind it. 72 is an interesting number because there are 72 angels or names of God, Shema Meforash in Hebrew. And there's a second deck out there from the same author. <laughs> and this deals with the 72 angels of the names of God. And if you divide 360, so a full circle of 360 degrees, 
through 72, you get 5 or 5 degrees. So these 72 demons or spirits and the 72, 72 angels or names of God can be linked to 5 degree sections of the zodiac. So um, especially for the 72 angels, they are special dates and special, well, about five day segments of the year, of the solar year, associated with each of the angels. And uh, one tradition is to link the demons or spirits of the Goetia with the 72 angels. So the first angel would be aligned with the first demon mentioned in the Goetia in the order they are mentioned in this script or book. So the first angel would be um, Vehuyach and the first spirit or demon mentioned in the Goetia is Baal. So what you can see is, let me have a look, I haven't checked the cards before, but as I already stumbled upon, yes. So Baal is the first spirit mentioned in the Goetia and what you can see here is the Hebrew word or name of the corresponding angel. So the first of the 72 angels, which is, as mentioned before, Vehuyach. So each card features the demon or spirit of the Goetia um, in full illustration and whatnot. We'll dive into that later, but also the 72 angels, which is quite nice because in a way you get two decks <laughs> <laughs> for one, which is quite interesting. And 72 minus 78 cards of the tarot um, leaves you with six cards without an associated demon or spirit or angel if we are talking about the other deck, which I don't have as of now. Um, so six cards are there that feature other demons or occult beings and spirits, for example here Baphomet, but we will look at that um, when we dive into the cards themselves. So interesting and ah, what I can already see here is the six extra cards in a way to make 78 cards of the tarot um, are red, the name on the card is written in red. And then the 72 spirits or demons themselves are all in black. So what might be confusing for people who are not familiar with this whole concept of the Goetia and the spirits, um, as I already mentioned, the cards are in the, in the order of the spirits as they are mentioned in the manuscript and not in the order of the tarot. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do if I leave it as is or will I change it to the Taro's um, order? I guess we'll go with the Taro order because <laughs> most people watching this video will be um, familiar with that. So yes, I will use a little break to reorder the cards. Um, I would like to say one thing. Um, Guishia talking about demons might sound a bit too satanic or dark or evil or even dangerous for many people, but um, it depends on your worldview. It really depends on, the, on your worldview. And mythologically or historically, many of the spirits or demons, so-called demons in the Goetia and in this deck here, are um, uh, gods and goddesses of, of old cultures, um, which were then demonized by the church and whatnot and the Inquisition and I don't know through history demonized for example um, the demon Astaroth is um, well historians believe that it's um, Astarte Astarte um, Ashterat there are many different spellings throughout the ages and centuries but the Phoenician goddess which then ended in a demon called Astaroth. 
Well, in fact, it's a goddess. So there are many, many um, examples like this in the Goetia, in these demons and in this deck. So interesting. And most of the illustrations are from the Dictionnaire Infernal, the Infernal Dictionary, which is a book, I guess, from the 18th, 18th century, I'm not sure, I have to be honest, um, but around that <laughs> period. And it depicts illustrations of the different spirits and demons. And, well, it doesn't depict all 72 of them, so where there were missing illustrations from the from the dictionary, the infernal dictionary, um, they used other illustrations. I'm not sure, I guess maybe the author, which I haven't mentioned yet, Travis McHenry, the author Travis McHenry, there's also a picture of the man here, he has an Instagram feed too. So, Travis McHenry, um, maybe he talks about the missing illustrations and the whole idea and structure in the foreword and the introduction. We'll see. I will look it up. But, well, no. Before I flip the camera, I know we already are 11 minutes in, but <laughs> I have to talk about this because at very first glance, I just had one glance and I was, okay, so here's the book. Two pages, two cards. Here's the text, which are just three sentences. But <coughs> on the cards themselves are also descriptions of the demons and spirits. So, for example, here we have spirit number 39, Malphas, Ten of Swords. If we look up Malphas, 39, which is easy because the cards are in the Goetic order, in a way. Malphas. On this card it says, I have to flip the card, sorry, builds houses and high towers, destroys an enemy's swords and desires and all they have built, gives good familiars. So that is a description of the powers of Malphas. And then you have the sigil or seal of Malphas here. So, builds houses and towers, destroys enemies, thoughts and desires. In the book, it's exactly the same text. Builds towers, destroys enemies, thoughts and desires and all they have built resonates with the Ten of Swords in the traditional tarot, which is also mentioned on the card. So, sorry, I have to say that. This book is, really, it is in a way a waste of paper. I'm sorry, but it's just a depiction of the card and you already have the card. And the text written on the card is repeated again on the paper in the book. Why? No additional information or anything. So you get 72 pages repeating everything that's already on the card. I'm not sure why they did that. Of course, yes, to make it feel worthy and, and that you get, well, stuff when you buy this deck, not just a box and cards, but also a guidebook. So, well, I'm a bit disappointed, I have to say. I will check the introduction and there's a Celtic cross here and whatnot. Maybe, well, it's 15 pages. Maybe these 15 pages are brilliant. I don't know yet. I'm not so sure, to be honest. But we don't know. Um, yeah. The other 78 pages depicting the card with exactly the same text, doubled. You could have fixed or put all these information into a little white book, honestly. Make it a black little white book with red red letters on it, okay, but a complete book of information you don't really need because it's already on the cards. Hmm. Sorry folks, I had to say that. I don't mean it in a harm way, in a, in a harmingful way or 
<laughs> I don't mean to harm anybody. This is what I tried to say. <laughs> Sorry, but well, it's 15 minutes. I've rambled enough. You got an impression of the sturdy box, the book, the cards with very, very nice cardstock, I have to say. And are they gilded? No, not gilded. But now I will flip the camera and then we'll walk through the cards. See you in a second. So here we are again, second part of the Occult Tarot walkthrough and review. So now we will have a closer look at each of the cards. And I didn't order them in the traditional tarot order, I just went with the cards as they were delivered to me in the order of the Goetic Spirits. But we will manage, <laughs> I'm sure. So the six additional beings, spirits, demons, whatever you'd like to call them, to make up 78 cards are Baphomet, Baphomet. Here you get the name in Hebrew letters, and Baphomet is the magician, which makes sense because he's the as above, so below, masculine and feminine, human and animal, the four elements, light and dark, everything united. And then here at the bottom you get a sigil or seal for Baphomet, which is the inverted pentacle, showing the head of Baphomet. Then we get Beelzebub. Okay, and he is linked with the Archangel Raphael. Interesting, and associated with the moon. And then he has sigils from a grimoire. Lucifer is death in this deck, associated or, well, in a way, complementary to Archangel Michael, makes sense. And the sigil or seal of Lucifer, Moloch or Moloch, being the devil, linked with Gabriel. Azazel, being the Ace of Wands, linked with Raphael. Lucifuge, or Lucifuge, Rovocali, Rovocal. I'm trying to figure out, I guess this is Ariel or Oriel. Uriel, Ace of Pentacles, well, makes sense. And this being, spirit, demon, um, is from the Red Dragon, the Grand Grimoire. So there you have the six additional beings or cards. And then we get into the 72 spirits of the Goetia or the Lesser Key of Salomon. So here we have Ba'el and here you will always find the sigil. And then the angel, one of the 72 angels linked with this demon. And then a description of the powers of the spirit. Controls the weather, rain and lightning curses or causes pestilence. Interesting description because I own two or three different versions of um, the Goetia of the Lesser Key of Solomon and Bael is almost always associated with um, invisibility, making the magician or the witch or the warlock or whoever invisible. No invisibility mentioned here. Baal being the emperor, okay, that makes sense because he's the first um, spirit mentioned in the Goetia and he's called a great spirit and great king of hell there. So Baal being the first spirit mentioned and the king fits with the emperor. Agaris, the five of wands. 
riding a crocodile. Vasago, the tower. This is not an illustration from the Infernal Dictionary. Gamigin, Gamijan, Gamijin. Five of Pentacles. Looks like a tired horse, which, well, you could line that with the Five of Pentacles in a way. Ten of Wands, Marbas fits here with the illustration of a lion and then um, this column here very powerful but also maybe over overburdened valley four valley four this is the fourth pentacles a bit sphinxy amen or amon two of pentacles Serpent and Owl connected. Barbatos or Barbatus, Ten of Pentacles and covers treasures. Makes sense with the Ten of Pentacles. Paimon is the Queen of Wands riding a dromedar or camel. Ace of Cups, Buer, teaches philosophy, uses, and the use of herbs heals diseases, Ace of Cups. Three of Cups, Guzion, Gazion, Citri, Ace of Swords, inflames men with women's love and women with men's love. Causes them to show themselves naked. So now I'm not so sure, as mentioned before, this is my first review, walkthrough, whatever of this deck. I have to get to know it better, maybe. But this being obviously a watery spirit, I don't see a connection to the Ace of Swords and making people get inflamed with love. I don't see Ace of Swords. Maybe this card, this spirit, as it's depicted and with the description of its powers, would have fit much better with the Two of Cups. Hmm. But that's just my opinion, of course. Beleth, Knight of Cups, on a horse. Okay. Lirayi, Lirayi. Causes battles, Nine of Swords, okay. King of Swords, Eligos, Elijahs, Elegis. Separ, Separ, the lovers. Okay, causes women to love men and brings them together in love. Okay. Dotus, Page of Swords. Batim, Bathem. <laughs> Knight of Wands, again on a horse, fits. Sailors or Sellers, Two of Cups. Ah, okay. Causes the love of women to men and of men to women. Okay, this is Two of Cups, see, of course. Riding a crocodile. Not so Cupsy. <laughs> Four of Wands, Person, Poison. Page of Pentacles, Marax. Ooh, I like the name, the word, Marax. Ooh, sounds like an 80s hard rock or metal band, Marax. <laughs> Ipus, Epos, two of wands. Aim, Aim, five of cups. Nibirius, Nibirius. Seven of Pentacles. Glacia Labolas. Seven of Wands. A flying dog. Bune. Boone. Boone. The Sun. Hmm. Ronove. Ronovi. Ronovi. Eight of Wands. 
Berith, Berith, King of Pentacles. Here is the before mentioned Astaroth or Astarte. He is justice. He tells how the angels fell, reveals the past, present, and future, teaches the liberal science. Okay, all of this makes sense in connection with justice. Fornius. Interesting. I don't quite know what this is. Looks like a peanut snake. A winged, a bat winged peanut snake. Six of cups. Forest. Ooh, very strong. This could have been a nine or ten of wands. But okay. Ismodius. King of wands. Also one of the great kings of hell. Gap, go up, the star. Furfur, Furfur, Ten of Cups, the bat winged deer, like the horned one, or Canonus, Machosius, Marcosius, the Nine of Wands, Stolas, Stolas, the Page of Cups. Teaches astronomy and the values of herbs and precious stones. Depicted as an owl. Owl. Not an owl, an owl. <laughs> Quite a nice familiar, I'd say. Phoenix. The Phoenix. Queen of Cups. Halphus. Two of Swords. Malthus. Ten of Swords. <laughs> <coughs> Rome, Rome, Three of Swords, like a vulture. Focalor, or Focalo, Eight of Swords. Vipa, Fepa, Guide of the Waters, can make storms and rough seas. Zapnak, Five of Swords, oh, very warrior like. Shacks or shucks, four of cups. Vine or vena. Strength. Oh, a lion riding a horse, okay. Bifrons. Bifrons. Okay. Lights, corpse lights above graves and moves bodies. So the stoles, so the souls may be stolen. That's interesting for the hangman. Three of wands, Vual, Hagenti, 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 Queen of Pentacles, Crocle, Crocle, Temperance, very angel-like, yeah. Furcus, Furcus, the hermit, which is the only spirit in the Goetia associated with Saturn or lead, because the magical seals you can see here on the cards um, are to be um, engraved on, on a metal plate or, or amulet, and the metal for the different spirits, um, as so may now in the hermetic western magical tradition um the seven planets are linked with seven metals the sun is gold the moon is silver venus copper mars iron and saturn is lead and this is the only spirit associated with lead or saturn so he's a loner which fits with the hermit i'm not sure if this is why they chose this spirit if they did, that's nice. Balaam, Balaam, Page of Wands. Elosa, Alakair, the King of Cups. The Fool, Cameo, which fits in a way with Fool energy here. The Bird Man. Murma, Six of Wands. Orobas. Robus, three of pentacles, 
Grimori, the Empress, again riding a camel. Ozi, Oz, Seven of Cups, like a leopard. Or Jaguar? No, I'm not sure. Whoops. Amy. Aureus, the Hierophant. Vapula, the Pula, the World, again, like a Sphinx or a Griffin. Zagan. Zagan. Eight of Pentacles. Wheel of Fortune. Valak. Andras. 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 The Chariot. Sower of Discord. Slayer of Men. So you are very much warned to summon this spirit, as you can see here from the blood. Though the depiction or illustration is in itself quite nice. It's like an angel with the head of an owl riding a wolf. So quite interesting pagan um, spirit power animal associations going on here. Well, but Horus, 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 maybe Horus. Andrealphus, the peacock spirit, Queen of Swords. Chimaeus, Wolf Sword. Andusius, Nine of Pentacles, the unicorn, causing music. Belial, Belial. Quite a prominent demon or fallen angel. Judgment. The Carabia. Knight of Pentacles. Siri. Seer. Six of Swords. And then Dentalian. Quite beautiful here with the sun and the moon. Like. Janus with two heads being the high priestess shows vision knows the secret thoughts of all teaches science quite fitting and then Andromalius being the last one seven of swords ah, punishes thieves that makes sense connected to the seven of swords reveals hidden treasures so, <clears throat> that's it. Now, let me try and riffle shuffle these. Yes, they shuffle quite nicely. So, let's give them nice shuffle yes. I like how they riffle shuffle though they are a bit stiff they are already bending I have to say as you can see maybe here uh, a bit but it's okay and they already oh they are already chipping Oops, that's not nice for a deck that's, well, I guess you're not supposed to riffle shuffle this deck, but I riffle shuffle almost all my decks, Oops. except for maybe the Visconti Sforza because it's just too big <laughs> to riffle shuffle. So one card already flew out of the deck and this is Ozi Oza, the Seven of Cups, makes one cunning in liberal science, gives true answers on divine and secret things, able to turn others into different forms and convince them that the change is real. Ooh. 
So a bit of illusion, deception maybe going on here, fitting with the Seven of Cups. So don't be trapped by illusions or being convinced by others um, yeah, about things that are not as they are. So there we have it. <laughs> I hope you liked this quick walkthrough and review of the Occult Tarot. And feel free to comment in the chat box below. <laughs> Share your ideas, your opinions, your experiences. And as always, you can find me on Instagram, cards and colors, cards.n.colors there too. And yeah, see you soon. Bye.